Hey, this is Lynn. I am here today because I have a cardiology appointment coming up this afternoon. And um, I just kind of wanted to document my thoughts around it beforehand. And this video is really kind of focused on the concept of informed consent because I mean, the reason I'm going to see the cardiologist is because there's a suspicion that I might have orthostatic intolerance, meaning when I stand up, I don't know if my blood pressure drops or whatever, but I can't stand in one place like talking to someone for very long until I, I feel like I might pass out. I don't know if I have orthostatic intolerance. I am having something called a tilt table test in two days. Um, but the doctor that I last saw was trying to kind of just do a general test and was uh, struggling with getting my blood pressure reading, a, a good reading with me standing up. So she said, let's have you go see this cardiologist. So this is what I'm doing today is I'm going to go check out this, this cardiologist I've never seen before. And um, she said he's naturopathic doctor friendly. I guess his wife is a naturopathic doctor. But that's not really my concern. And I don't really have any concerns necessarily about this doctor. It's the medical group informed consent that they sent me. So I know before you go to see a new doctor, a lot of times they'll send you you know, some links and to some things to sign. And it's always like HIPAA. And, and yes, I agree. I know I need to pay my bills and stuff like that. I've never had a document like the one that I have now seen. I've never seen this before I've even had an appointment with a new provider, much less ever. This is, so I'm going to read this to you. So this is, I think one of the key takeaways from this is read the documents that you're being asked to sign. And it makes me wonder if they had this consent before the pandemic, because I know things got kind of crazy during the pandemic and people were, who knows what they were signing. And I know that there was a lot of uh, medical facilities that were just, I know they were given by the government release from liability, but I don't know what they did. I was like, I was only seeing naturopathic doctors during that time period. And I still am trying to only see naturopathic doctors. But there's a concept called informed consent. And that is you don't sign away consent for treatment or consent for anything until the doctor has talked to you about it. And you know the risks and the benefits and why it's being done. Then if a consent is required for that particular situation, then you can sign their consent if you agree. It's informed consent. You have been informed about what they're going to do. So this is just called a consent for care. And I, I've seen these before, um, but this one really jumped out and it's just the, the details in it. So it's basically, it's saying, I consent to and permit my healthcare team to provide treatment and care as they deem necessary and appropriate, including but not limited to tests, including HIV tests, examinations, anesthetics. No, I'm not going to con consent ahead of time to anesthetics, other medications, immunizations. No, as one who didn't get the jab, I'm a nurse. I've gotten every other jab there is, but that jab I didn't trust, and now I'm not really trusting them anyway. So, no, you're not going to knock me out and then give me a jab. Not that they would do that, but anyways, I know I realize I'm being all conspiracy theorist. But anyways, my radar is up <laughs> ever since the pandemic. X-rays, medical and surgical treatment of other uh, and other treatments. No, I haven't even seen this doctor. They're asking me to consent for medical and surgical treatments and other treatments. No. Okay. Next part. I understand my healthcare team consists of physicians, nurses, and other healthcare professionals, including those in training. Yeah, I understand that. Here's what really got me too. I understand that my care is under the control of my attending physicians who may be employees of blank blank health independent physicians. No, my health care, my care is not under the control of a doctor who I have never met. Even if I had met them, I'm in control of my own care. 
doctors, nurses, you don't do stuff without my permission. And that's a patient right. That's not just me and my opinion. That's your right as a patient. So no, absolutely not. I am not going to, I do not understand that my care is under the control of this attending doctor. No, absolutely not. Um, I understand that, okay, and this is interesting too, okay? I understand that blank blank health is not liable for the actions or omissions of independent physicians, which I get, yes, they're independently contracted. So, but is that really the case? I don't know for sure the law. Like if, a, if you hire an independent physician and they wreck you, can you get sued? Maybe. I haven't looked into this yet, so I don't know that I understand that. Um, and this is interesting. It says, so they don't want to have any liability for what this doctor does, which, yeah, I, I, I don't remember if that's okay or not, but I'm not going to sign it not knowing. Um, and then it says, I am aware that the practice of medicine is not an exact science. Oh, that's interesting because we heard otherwise over the past few years, right? And I acknowledge that no guarantees or promises have been made to me as a result of treatment or examination at Blank Blank Health. Well, yeah, we know that. We know that there's no guarantees. But I'm not releasing necessarily comp block, giving you carte blanche to do whatever you want, turning over my control for my care, and then releasing you from liability. This is a horrible consent. It's it's not informed. I haven't even met this doctor. I have never even been to this facility. And they wanted me online to sign this before I even left my house. No. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens when I arrive. And hopefully they'll let me go ahead and see this doctor. And hopefully they're not going to say, oh, but you haven't signed this consent yet. I'm not signing the consent. I haven't even seen this doctor. I'm not going to consent for some stranger to do whatever they want. If I, for some reason, passed out, yes, I get it. If there's a code, then yes, they do what they need to do for life, life to save my life. But they don't have to give me immunizations. They don't have to do all sorts of stuff on that consent. And honestly, I have an emergency contact. So that's who's making the decisions as soon as they can reach him. So... This is just like, it really settles wrong with me that people are signing this blindly, probably not reading it. Just like, oh, I need to sign this for my appointment. Let's just go. Let's just go. Let's get this done. And so I guess I would just encourage everybody to read these documents. Um, understand with your health care that informed consent is incredibly important. And... Um, I think we saw that over the past few years with the pandemic that, you know, something was rolled out with no information. And all of this consent and all of this legal stuff seems to go out the window if there's an emergency authorization. Um, but I don't know if you knew this, but for the jab, you know, normal, normal jabs, if you open up the packaging in the box, it has, it's a huge piece of paper full of all the information you could ever want to know and more about what they're putting in your body. All the potential side effects, all sorts of stuff, everything. The paper that pulled came out of that box was basically said, there's no information. This is all you're going to get. Nothing. It was blank except for one little line of work of saying that we don't know anything about this. Um, nobody no, no doctor, nurse, nobody should have given that because they were completely unable to provide informed consent. The only thing that they could do is say, we know nothing about this. We don't know what it's going to do in your body. You are taking on all the risk of this new product. And if the patient's willing and says, yeah, I'm willing to take that risk. Great. That's fine. I don't know. There's probably a lot of you out there who got it. Did anybody ever say that to you? Or did they just say it's safe and effective? No, we did not know that at the time. We did not know that. And if you ever went to see and look at the insert, you would see it's blank. So the true informed consent in that case would have been to say you're taking on all risk without, without us knowing for sure. They didn't even know for sure if it was going to work properly because there really hadn't been enough um, 
time with testing. So anyways, I digress from my cardi <laughs> cardiology appointment, but this is something that's really important to me. And I realize I'm not a retired nurse, but as a nurse and a nurse's job is to advocate for patients. And so it's really important to me to, for people to know that your rights as a patient, you have a right to all the information and you have a right to say no, if there's something you don't want them to do. It is your right, and you are in control of your health, and your health, your health care. Um, so they should not be asking you to sign a consent form before you even enter the facility. If there is something that they want you to sign and you don't feel comfortable with it, and they really want you to ask them to print it out, they should be able to print it out, and you should be able to take it to see the doctor and go over it with the doctor before you sign it. And make sure you're comfortable, like really comfortable with what it says. And I mean, honestly, I would like cross things out and I'd modify things if I wasn't comfortable with, with things. And if they're not okay with that, then they're violating my rights as a patient. You know, they're supposed to do what I want them to do. And unless I'm completely unconscious and they can't get a hold of anybody, um, then I don't have to sign something to say that they have permission to intercede to save my life under that situation, they have that right. That's a part of the ethical the code for them. In emergency situations, they can't reach any family and my life is on the line. They have a right to do what they need to, to save my life and I do not need to sign away and give them permission to do that. But under every other circumstance, yes, I'm supposed to have a conversation with the doctor before I sign any consent. So anyways, I'm going to be leaving in a few minutes for this appointment. So I will check back afterwards and uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, hopefully they'll let me still see the doctor. If not, um, hmm, interesting. I may be filing a complaint. We'll see. Alrighty. I'll see you later. Hey, this is Lynn. I am back from my cardiology appointment and it was very interesting. So when I got there, checked in and the girl said, oh, I see you haven't signed this consent form. And I said, that's correct. I said this, I'm not going to sign it because this is against the code of ethics of the American Medical Association. Informed consent is required. This is not informed consent. This is uninformed consent. And I'm not gonna sign my rights away as a patient. <laughs> and so she kind of looked at me, she was a little bit younger. She kind of looked at me deer in the headlights and. I wasn't gonna be hard on her, of course. And then there was this older lady that was a receptionist and she says, well, that's what you have to sign. This is their consent form here. I said, oh no, it's not. This is not an ethical consent form. And this is, I'm not going to sign this and no patient should be signing this. And she just kind of argued with me a little bit. And of course my blood pressure's going up, which is my heart rate's going up, which is not good for a cardiology appointment, but I stuck to my ground. And um, I said, this is not, anything that anybody, any patient should be signing. And so the girl that was seeing me, and so the lady next, next to her just kind of shook her head. And I, I told her, I said, I'm correct on this. I know my rights as a patient and I'm a registered nurse. So she probably thought, oh, she's such a Karen. Sorry if you're a Karen out there. I think that's such a, such a really bad thing to call people like poor Karens. I have a really good friend named Karen. Anyways, I digress. Um, but they probably thought that. So the girl that was, uh, she checked me in and she said, well, let me go talk to my supervisor. And so the supervisor came out and I shared the same information with her. And, um, she said, well, I'm going to go talk to my manager. <laughs> and, uh, then I guess they were going to be talking to the medical assistant that was going to be seeing me. And so I'm sitting there in the waiting room going, okay, this is going to be interesting. Um, cause the older woman basically said, well, you know, we can't see her. She doesn't sign this consent. <laughs> and, so anyway, so the medical assistant called me back and she was so nice and stuff. And, and I, and while she was on the way to taking me to the room, the supervisor stopped me again and she goes, what was that organ, the A, uh, what was that organization that you were talking about? I said, the American Medical Association, the governing body of all your physicians. And she goes, oh, okay. <laughs> so she went back to her manager. I'm thinking, really? You don't know the American Medical Association? Hmm, you're managing a cardiology clinic. Anyways, so um, 
I got to go see, go in and see. I told the medical assistant what was going on with this con consent form. And she's going, oh, my gosh, yes, there's no way you should sign that. And um, so the doctor came in and saw me. And um, and there was a good doctor. And, you know, they did a 12-lead 12 12 lead EKG, which was fine. Um, he read through my chart. We talked about my mast cell activation syndrome and hereditary alpha-tryptosemia. Went through my medical history. He did uh, by, uh, blood pressure. Uh, sitting and then standing he did several standing he said he wasn't necessarily too concerned about the actual reading but to listen to my blood flow um, and so he did several of those and so he did say that that he I have autonomic dysfunction which he said is really a lot of people with mass activation syndrome have auto, autonomic dysfunction um, and so he the tilt table test he said will hone in on specifically what type of autonomic dysfunction it is and he said there's multiple types and he said that there wouldn't need to be any follow-up with him because the follow-up would be with a neurologist if I want to you know improve my quality of life he said there's really no cure for it but to improve my quality of life he did say it's recommended to always wear compression stockings um, which I haven't been doing, but he said that there's a lot of people who will also need to use an abdominal binder. And I said, well, that's interesting because I mean, the ultimate abdominal binder is your own abdominal muscles and having really good core strength. And so I asked him, I said, have you ever heard of anybody improving their autonomic dysfunction by improving their core strength? And he said, no, I haven't. And I told him, I said, well, I told him about my plank challenge. And I said, over the course of the month of January with my plank challenge, I've noticed that um, the orthostatic intolerance seems to be improving, like the length of time that I can stand in one place before I start to feel like I'm going to pass out has grown. It used to be like within a minute, sometimes it was in thir like within 30 seconds. Um, but now I actually can go longer before I have that feeling. And sometimes I can stand there for maybe 15 minutes and I'm okay. Other times it's maybe five minutes later or 10 minutes later, but um, I did experience it the other day when, on Saturday when we were at the memorial service for Dave's aunt, doing a lot of standing around talking to people and kind of towards the end, uh, kind of before we were getting ready to leave and I didn't tell Dave this. So if he watches this video, this is how he'll find out. I, I felt like I was going to pass out. I felt that rush to my head, like the blood pressure just drops, like all the blood is draining out of your head. And I felt like I was going to pass out. And I, I kind of steadied myself on him. I started moving around a little bit and it did pass. Um, so he, and the doctor did say, yeah, you do not have POTS. So that's pos, uh, posterior orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, what, meaning when you stand up, your heart rate goes up like crazy. I do not have POTS. And I already knew that because I would be able to check for myself if my heart rate went crazy when I stood up and it doesn't, it's blood pressure. And so he said that with dis, with dysautonomia, he, the blood pressure can be up, down, you know, and so medication is not an issue uh, uh, anything with a treatment for it, which I knew that, you know, you're not going to give somebody medication for high blood pressure when their blood pressure is going up and down because of a neuro, a neurological reason. Um, so it was a good appointment and I really appreciated his input. And so I have my tilt table test on Thursday in two days, but after the appointment, he came back to me, and I'm not going to cover up, but he came back to me with the consent form that I wouldn't sign. He crossed all of this out. He wrote in, I do not agree. He signed it as a witness, and he said, I'm escalating this because nobody should be signing this consent form. He said, I had never read this before. I didn't even know that this consent form was what patients were signing. Nobody should be signing this. This is not an appropriate consent form. I was like, oh my gosh, yay. <laughs> and I told him, I said, I, you know, I'm, typically I'm not a fighter and I don't like confrontation, but this is a hill I was willing to die on because this is wrong. And as a nurse or retired nurse, I'm still, I still feel as though I should be a patient advocate. I know about patient rights and I should be definitely advocating for myself. 
if he didn't escalate this, I was going to escalate this to the American Medical Association um, to get to have them deal with it. But he's escalating it. He says this needs to be changed. There's no way that our, the patient should be signing this. So that was a big victory. And I was really impressed and I was really pleased. And it, But it does make you wonder, right? Like the doctors don't know about these forms that their patients are signing. They don't deal with the paperwork. They just see you. And they chart and they just, their whole focus is on what's going on with you from a medical perspective. Um, Honestly, the receptionist probably had never signed it. Do you ever go to a doctor's appointment in a new place and they, they want you to sign forms. And if you haven't signed, signed them ahead of time and looked at them, all you have is this little, little electronic panel It doesn't show you the form. It just gives you the signature place to sign. And they'll say, okay, well, now you're going to sign the HIPAA form. And so you sign it without reading it. Oh, now you're going to sign the financial form. And then you sign it without reading it. And now you're going to sign a consent and you sign it without reading it. Don't do that. (laughs) Because that's probably why nobody really has caught this situation. Not just that, but people really not knowing what their rights are. And um, so big takeaway, which I really want to convey to everybody is read these things, know your rights. I will put a link in the description to the website for the American Medical Association explaining informed consent, because it's really important that you know that and you should never consent to anything if the doctor has not discussed it with you. Now, if it's an inpatient situation and you're coming there seeking emergency care, um, you know, they may have you signed. It's okay for the doctor to treat me for what I'm doing here, but I think you should still be careful and you should read what you're, what you're signing um, and not just let them do anything carte blanche. Like, you know, seriously, I'm, and hopefully the medical staff at a hospital knows that regardless to what you've signed coming in the door, they're going to discuss treatment with you and they're going to get your permission before doing anything. And honestly, of all the time years I worked in the hospital, I, I always discuss things with patients or if it was something that required a doctor to discuss, had the doctor come in and talk about it with the patient and make sure they fully understood what was being done and fully agreed with what was being done. Um, but anyways, so that's basically it. That's my cardiology appointment today. The drama surrounding it, um, patient rights, informed consent, very, very important issues that um, I wasn't going to let this one pass. And I was going to make sure that that I stood my ground on this one. And I could see the other people in the waiting area. They were kind of watching. I wasn't yelling. I was speaking firmly, but calmly. But it was you know, it was a public conversation. So people must've been going, Oh, what's wrong with her? I don't know. I hope, I hope that they were listening and maybe hopefully questioning like, Oh my gosh, what, what did I sign? Did I sign my life away? Because I told them that I said, I'm not signing my life away. I'm not giving you, you carte blanche to do whatever you want and give my control over to a physician. And I have never even seen a facility I've never stepped foot in absolutely not. And I was very firm about it. So anyways, it worked out well. So hopefully this is going to get changed and the um, patients that are existing patients will hopefully not have any repercussions for for signing this. Uh, Hopefully they won't because this would not stand up in a court of law. I mean, it's completely wrong. (laughs) So anyways, that is it. That is my appointment uh, information report from today. Uh, Again, I am having my tilt table test on Thursday. So I'll report back. I'm a little bit nervous about it because it is kind of unnerving knowing that you feel like you're going to pass out. And I don't, I hope they won't let me pass out. That's kind of my hope, but like that would be kind of scary if they did. So we'll see what happens. I need to make sure I drink a lot of water and, um, yeah, I'm supposed to hold my medications for a couple days. So it's going to be interesting to, to see. I hold my antihistamines for a couple days and see how I do without them. I hope I don't have any throat swelling. Um, but yeah, anyways, life is interesting. So anyways, I will, uh, I know I say anyways a lot. I need to cut that out. 
I got it. I watch back, you know, my videos and stuff. And then I go and I look and see how I stumble over my words sometimes. And I say anyways a lot, or I say so a lot. <laughs> it's like, I'm not a professional public speaker. This is just the way I talk. And I think I, I don't plan ahead what I'm going to say. I just talk and babble. So anyways, see, I said it again. Oh my gosh. Hope you all are having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.